they were able to get 43 points uh, scoring in the second half. I was wondering what you see as, as kind of uh, – what's leading to the defensive uh, uh, breakdowns uh, that's a, that's allowing team to, to go in those second half uh, scoring runs. So uh, CO, it's not just a second half problem. We've been getting our butts kicked in the first half. It's uh, um, the defensive end of the floor has been a problem for us. We haven't gotten turnovers like we've been able to do in the past. And um, Team shoots 61%. You're not getting turnovers, and they're shooting 61%, so your defense is not very good. Uh, you can say that we're playing a lot of freshmen and that they're not bought into it enough, but the defensive end of the floor is the most important thing at this level of college basketball. Everybody's got guys who can make shots when they're not guarded, but special teams have guys who can make shots when they really are guarded. And we're giving them too many open shots. We get three straight possessions. Uh, they make three, I think, three straight possessions or just two? I think it was three. I think it was three, and uh, we didn't have the proper matchups a single time. Didn't get the guy picked up. And uh, so it's some breakdowns. It's uh, uh, defensive end of the floor has been more important to us. Uh, lower scoring games, it's got to be more important as well because we're not uh, gifted enough on the offensive end to make a lot of shots. What do we make? Uh, eight threes tonight. That's been more than we've been making. but. Uh, Go two for seven from the foul line in the second half doesn't help you. So it's a lot of things, guys. Uh, Greg Barnes. Roy, I know this is part of what you just said, but it was 61-53 with about seven minutes to play, and, and Georgia Tech outscored you, I think, 19-6 to six the rest yep. of the way. Um, in addition to defensive issues, what, what were some of the problems there? Well, we missed some – I can't remember if it was a free – during the time where we missed a couple of free throws. It might have been earlier than that. But we had an open shot. Garrison missed an open one about uh, 10 feet right in the free throw lane, the three-second lane, excuse me. Armando missed one. Uh, uh, he banked it off the board. It came around on the other side. You know, you stop runs by other people by scoring yourself or getting defensive stops. And we were not able to keep up the uh, uh, – pressure of on them by scoring and we were not able to get stops as well. So it wasn't just our defense. Guys, we scored six points, I think, and that may be what you said, Greg, six points the last seven minutes of the game. Andrew, Andrew Jones. Coach, you had three different starters tonight than what you had been using during the course of the year. Garrison and Leakey among them. What went into that decision? And you had Garrison and Leakey to start the second half, so why did you switch it there? Uh, went into the decision because of our defensive grades in the North Carolina State game uh, uh, more than anything. But there's a lot of things that goes into decisions about who starts, who doesn't start. Uh, the hardest one was Garrison because his defensive grade wasn't as, uh, uh, as bad as the other two. And, uh, but at the same time, I try to treat everybody fairly. Uh, and at halftime, I decided just to go with different people uh, I trust Garrison, but uh, uh, even Garrison has got to be held to a high standard defensively. And Leakey, I think, could be the, one of the best defensive players in the league, and he's got to be held to a high standard defensively. And Caleb as well, his defensive grade was really bad at North Carolina State. And uh, they all ended up playing. It's uh, I tried to bring up to them. And it really doesn't make a heck of a lot of difference who you start. It really doesn't. I mean. Marvin Williams never started a game for us, and we won a national championship, and he was second player taken in the NBA draft. Steve Woodbury at Kansas one time never started a game for us his entire junior year, and he ended up being second team all conference. So you got to be successful whether you're out there as a sub or a starter. Thank you. Brian Keyes. Boy, starting games this season has been difficult for you guys. Um, but this was the first time you didn't actually trail uh, all the first half except for the season opener. What was happening differently, whether it was the new starting lineup or guys just more keyed in? Oh, I think we, you know, we turned it over 10 times in the first half. It's not exactly like we played great. Georgia Tech helped us out with the, uh, their ability to make shots wasn't as good in the first half as it was in the second half. Uh, uh, they turned it over a few times themselves, but uh, we were able to have the lead. I wasn't pleased with the way we played, but again, I don't. I don't think the starting lineup changing that had anything to do with us having the lead. We just got the ball inside a little bit and made some baskets there. But uh, uh, got to play the total game. 
Adam Smith. Roy, I, I hear you on the on the defensive grades, and, and and it really not even mattering who starts because everybody's going to play. But just wondering, w with changing the the lineup, the starting lineup, was that something you had thought about for a couple days, a long time, or is that something that you just kind of decided uh, close guys, to tip off? Guys, you you got to understand. I get to make a lot of decisions. I don't put it through the freaking press and everything. If you want me to tell you, the defensive grades sucked. It weren't just bad, they were terrible. And I don't have to, uh, well, I decided to start some different guys. It made no difference how much they played. They still play minutes, but you've got to play. You watch the state game and you tell me if you thought we were good defensively. Yara, and then uh, we're going to get the players in here momentarily, I think. Yeah. Um, hi, Coach. My condolences on your, your recent loss, but I just wanted to ask you, what do you think is not um, translating between practice and game time? Our focus, again, I'll say the focus on the defensive end of the floor, uh, our movement without the ball on the offensive end of the floor, and guys uh, – uh, who make shots in practice don't necessarily make them a lot in the games. And then the head coach is screwing it up himself. 